into Sunday. It was an absolute crazy Sunday. We had two absolute cracking games. One we both got behind here regardless of who we tipped and one we'll get into a little bit later that you were a little bit more upset about. But the first oh. game is... I wouldn't say I was upset. I would I wouldn't say I was upset. Yes, we lost. But the way we lost the game, I say is a better way to lose than this current team who lost only moments beforehand. So um you so say You've got the Sharks on the board. It was a 32 to 30 win by the Warriors. It was 26 to 12 at half time, but that also doesn't say the whole story. Tyg Wilton went over in the first minute. Renato Militalo went over in the fourth. Katoa went over in the 14th. So this team was flying from all accounts. They had this game up. They're up 18-0 after 15 minutes. And then you flip over. Wade Egan scores and you go, okay, maybe the Warriors have a sniff. And then Kennedy scores in the 26 and you think, okay, this game's over. But after going up 24-6, to we then have an absolute breakdown from the Warriors Nakora scores, oh, sorry, an absolute breakdown by the Sharks with Nakora scoring, Johnson scoring, Cossie scoring, and obviously Josh Curran in the 67th. What did you make about it? Mate, this game, oh, it was just back and forth. Like it was like, this was basically another Manly, uh, Manly Nines game. If I, was to, if I was to walk into the Cronulla Sharks dressing room pre-game and said, boy, you're going to score 30 points, you think that, that regardless of who that is, you, you think that's a win, at least two points. But, yeah, they blow a 20-point lead. They let the other team come in front, you know, a, two poor kicks from the boot is the reason that they've lost this game. Yeah, now it's not all relies on their kicker, but if you've got a team that's going up in sixes versus a, a, a team going up in fours, the team that's going up by sixes is going to obviously win the game and, you know, Oh, Nico Hines kicking from the, n near the sideline, 30, 30 yards out, you know, kicks it, misses it. You know, unlucky sport in that sense. But, mate, the bloke won a Dali M. He should be kicking pretty, pretty high up, and especially when the game's on the line like that. But in saying that, you shouldn't be blowing a 20-point lead and letting a team come back and bite you, especially John Johnson, who previously played at the Cronulla Sharks. And I just feel like it was a tale of two environments, not even halves, it's just two environments. When it was all dry and clear and pristine, it was shark ball. But as soon as it started getting dark and gloomy, a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, which turned to a fucking monsoon rain, here comes the New Zealand Warriors to take out the two points and win it all. And by golly God, what a game it was. But again, the Sharks, Manly, Knights, they all need to have a hard look at themselves this week and realise how do we score 30-odd points or more in some teams' cases and lose a game. That's a defensive error, a defensive lack in uh, in concentration and Craig Fitzgibbon, I hope he gets in there and rips these guys a new one because that is a terrible way to lose. You know what? Let's look at this on a lighter day and let's ignore the Sharks. That was dismal. They should have won that game. They should have run away with it. By all accounts, it should have been 13 plus. When they went up 18 nil, you thought, okay, this is it. But let's talk about the Warriors. We do have a lot of listeners that do come in from New Zealand. So let's talk about the positive side of this game. The Warriors now. Every year, again, like we've said, week in, week out, we hype this team up. We say this is the year they're going to do something. But let's just look at what they've done here. They've come down to Shark Park where not a lot of teams come down and win. Not a lot of teams come and win. They're 14, nil, they're 14 points down at halftime. They turn it around, that grit, that we're not going to give up. We're going to fight. We're going to be resilient in defense. And like you said, a little bit of rain came down. Their completion rate didn't uh, change. They stayed the same. They held on to the ball. They scored their five tries. They went five from five from kicks. Penalty goals, one from one. Um, 79 completion rate in that weather. If you went back two years, I'd be saying the Warriors are probably sitting at about 50%, 55% because they wouldn't be able to hold on to the ball. But this team just has that. We're not going to lose. Now, I don't know if that's Sean Johnston coming in and going, mate, look how good I'm playing. Boys, rally around me. Let's do this. I'm going to control it. 
or if it's Webster coming in going, boys, here's the game plan. I know, Like you said, I know how to go back to back. I know the tactics of how we're going to turn this side around. I think we need to give a lot of respect to Webster here because he's come in and he made the comment that after we play the Sharks, we're going to know where our team's at. Well, your team's doing fucking brilliant and they're sitting second in the ladder. So talk to me about the Warriors. Let's finish this on a positive note and then we'll move into oh. the final game. Yeah, hats off to Webster because he's coming into this this New Zealand Warriors side and he's giving this this side a breath of uh, a smell of fresh air, um, a breath of fresh air into this club. You know, he's reignited the Sean Johnson that we've all we all fell in love with pre leaving the New Zealand Warriors. Like, haven't hasn't he come in? Like, hasn't he done a like a a weird a weird and wonderful Reuniting with the Warriors, he left the. He was he come he started with the Warriors. Everyone was saying, "Well, yeah, he's so good, but he's at the Warriors. He needs to test himself over here." He comes over here. Yeah, he has a couple of injuries that sort of puts him on the back foot. He reaches out to go back to New Zealand Warriors. They actually close the door and say, "No, you are not welcome to come back." Stays there a little bit longer. Ends up going back to the New Zealand Warriors of all teams, and then. Finding this uh, this new spark in his career, Webster to spark it up with with the um with the two rocks and yeah I think he's leading the pack and going boys follow me I'm going to lead you through and he's led this team to a two uh, a two point win um and taken home the two points back to New Zealand y- yeah you say three four years ago you'd say Warriors are completing fifty or if not less percentage wise but. These good teams or these teams that have just come about in the last few years, I don't think they know how to play wet weather the football. We've seen it in this game. We saw it in the la- in, in the next game we were about to touch on. But teams are so used to playing in this perfect, dry, um, you know, grass is, you know, they're all perfect. It's, it basically, it's like they're playing at the Masters in Augusta. Yet, when they turn up to your old, good old nine holes that don't even get looked at around the corner here, they just don't know how to play football. These teams, like the Warriors, just turn it on and make make it rain for every game that they play. Because if that's the performance they're pro- providing, let it rain, as as the man Prince once said. Well, I will say if there's one team I think everyone's happy to see winning if they're not playing your team, it definitely is the Warriors. After all, they gave up for the NRL to keep this season going, being away from their family, not this season, but the last couple of seasons. I think, mate, I'm all behind it. I'm so glad they're doing well. I'm so glad they're sitting second on the ladder. And it's just good to see a Warriors side that, I mean, we could be wrong, but a side that doesn't look like they're going to drop off. They're going to keep moving forward. They're going to keep building. They're going to go home. They're going to play in front of Mount Smart. They're going to sell it out. They're going to see their family. And I think the Warriors, they might not win a comp. They might not go too far into the final series, but they are, in my prediction right now, going to be in that eight. And moving forward, they're going to cause a lot of uh, ruffles for teams in that top eight moving forward. But let's look at the top performers You've got Blake Braley on 40 tackles with Jackson Ford on 41. The run meters on 208. You have Jesse Ramian with big chance on 207. With the line breaks, Ronaldo's got two and Edward Cossey got one. So kind of the players you expect to step up, but to see this Warriors side matching the top performers of the Sharks, it's absolutely brilliant. And I can't wait to see what the Warriors can do with the rest of this season.